Just like when I first told my dad I wanted a box. So what do you want a box? Nectarine, beaches, <laughs> gloves? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabes que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things. Drag cleaner ahí. My kid fell. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some. Neo Spore, Spore and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Thanks to our sponsor, Medterra. The Kraft trusted, effective, and accessible CBD products that support deeper sleep, relaxation, and relief. Go to Medterra, M-E-D-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash OMG high and enter the code OMG HI at checkout for 30% off and free shipping on your first order. Listen, no product gets on this podcast without the approval of the endorsers. Yep. All I asked you was to just pay attention this week. Pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. All right. So, hey, this is a, this is a small segment. This is the first first one. I like to call Fuck TV. Fuck TV. This is a TV. This is a segment, a brand new segment. You're here for the first for the first one. For the inaugural what, session. What, Fuck what? TV. Ready, Aaron? Sure, yeah. It's very short. I've been watching Barry for the last day. Fucking amazing. As as detectives and crime fighters, you'd love it. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. No. Fucking amazing. Hey, how is it? It's great. Fucking amazing. What is it? Barry. Barry on HBO. Okay. It's about a dude that ends up being a hitman, but he go, comes out to Hollywood to like a low rent hitman to hit a dude. And he ends up walking into an acting class and he just starts taking acting. It's fucking crazy. Didn't Danny acting class. DeVito do that with Get Shorty already? Um, is it similar? To Get that? Shorty was uh, Travolta came from Miami, and he came to uh, see uh, uh, Gene Hackman. And they fucking beat his ass up, yeah, for the movie. No, oh, I didn't yeah. see that one. I got, it's great. I got hooked on Bosch last time I was fucking on. Bosch, fucking puto. He was, I'll he was, fucking <laughs> rub my fucking wet face. <laughs> Who's that dude? <laughs> you know what I don't like about Bosch? He says you gotta watch Bosch. I know this girl that's in it. Uh, you know when you're married, but the husband, you know it's puto, right? You know, if, if he had a, one choice of choice A or choice B, he'll take the fucking cotton every time, man. So uh, she's in it. But then Bosch, when it starts, it's like they, they fucking starts to talk Spanish like bad, like, enseñame tus manos. It's like fucking click. They don't have that shit here on uh, Barry. I? That's why it's called Fuck Bosch and Fuck TV. Thank you. Now, Gil. <laughs> <laughs> introduce our guest for today. Well, let's welcome today. With a tight shirt. On. There See, he you is. Know, if you and I, even if they made the biggest shirt we'd put on, <laughs> we'd fucking look like that. This is actually a double X. I mean, I can't, what am I supposed to hey, do? Well, hey, don't, hey, don't apologize for being in shape to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today we got Mike Rodriguez, longtime friend. Uh, has been on the What do you mean longtime friend? Longtime, longtime friend. He, wor- he, was a mem- he is still a working member of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. He's currently assigned a homicide bureau where he's been for the last Are you one of those dudes in the video years? that fucking pounced that guy? Eh? Just kidding. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm just pushing. I didn't see anything. <laughs> the fucking ears got red on the top. Just on the top. They were like, uh, started like... They, they no, no, no. So, so you're currently... Yes. As, uh-huh. Yep. Sheriff's homicide, 18 years. Been Has there been a show, a TV show about about L.A. sheriffs? Not Bosch. No. That's about my mom. Those, no. those are probably, uh, what's Bosch? Uh, uh, animal regulation? LAPD. Oh, that's what I mean. Animal regulation. The uh, I had a joke that I used to say, uh, uh, well, I used to do the thing. I said, hey, uh, LAPD use the white tees. Sheriffs use uh, the uh, the black tees on the back. And higher patrol use the red ones, the ladies. <laughs> Fuck you. Get the golf tournament say. Yeah, I would move uh, it around depending on who, which one of them were, were there more. Oh, well, there you go. I fin- finish. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I first met How him long? Here. But, what, but but is this? Does he have to do being here as your friend or as a as a guest? Can he be both? Have we have somebody. I don't, I don't have, have somebody to turn. In here that's both. I don't have to turn him. Do, I, do you want me to fucking hate him? You know, that's he's easy our guest? to do. No, I mean I'm sure it's easier to do. The. Uh, 
No, but you don't have to. No, he's start a guest. Start mamando. He, he's well, a, well, he's then, a guest. Then, then you do introductions. Do the, the the actual qualifications, and then at the end you say, and he's been my friend for the last fucking year and a half, or I don't know how long you guys have known each other. <laughs> uh, All right, anyways, he, go ahead. He's been on the department, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, 30, 34 years. He's last 18. He's worked Sheriff's Homicide. He was formerly a boxer for the... Uh, Sheriff's Department boxing team. How come that Sheriff's Department don't have a, a boxing team here? Because they be just throwing chicken they do. in jail? No, they do. They, they do. Good, yeah. Because they, they get enough of it on the job. They don't need to put fucking shorts on. No, they, yeah. they, 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 <laughs> do a, <laughs> they do a good thing. And they they fight. Uh, it used to be an annual thing. Uh, LAPD versus Sheriff's Department. The fire department got involved. We brought guys from New York out here. We take a team down to. Uh, All right, let me ask you a question. Marine Corps, Pendleton. Did Canelo Alvarez bite off more than he could chew by fighting that Russian? Absolutely, you know I'm, I work with Bivol. That was that my, dude, that's my fighter. Okay, okay. So if any, if explain who this guy is. Okay. In case people, because I never seen the dude before. But you know I love boxing. But you know as your life goes, you don't really get a chance to watch. Well, I, what I always tell people is people, Canelo's a great fighter. What, what's this guy's name? The Russian guy. Dmitry Bivol. B, B I V O L. B I V O L. Yeah, Dmitry Bivol. What people don't realize, he was a highly decorated amateur worldwide. He's been a world champion for five years. I got a phone call six years ago. It says, Mike, will you go to Moscow, Russia? You're going to work a world title fight with one of Freddie Roach's guys. I work with all of Freddie Roach's You sure guys. you weren't over there peeing on the bed going with, with the other about the number four? Well, they five. actually put me up in a brothel. That's where I stayed for That's the whole week. That's the best week. place to stay. And, they, and instead of telling me what I could eat food, they just said, hey, whatever you want, go ahead. And you didn't see like an eye in the fucking painting like that of Putin like moving like they do in the, in the old... Mystery, you know, and you're yeah, like, this it, it probably you know, when you're like this, and then you go, oh, I think I'm about to go to bed, and then the eye goes like that. Yeah, it was like those old, uh, they, pain, those old paintings my grandparents used to have, where the to, eye, yeah. eye used to follow you. They used to like, because you know, they, they like to, you know, put cameras and sound in there. Well, yeah, that was the communist country over there. Yeah. I mean, but anyway, it was really no surprise to us that he won. People kept saying, "Oh, Canelo," and you got to remember the whole Canelo fandom. I mean, it's a big deal. It's like yeah. when Oscar used to fight. It's a huge deal, but. When they say bit off more than he can chew, this was a legitimate light heavyweight world champion. And I'm gonna, I'll say it, yeah, he probably bit off more than he could chew with Bivol because this guy is a great fighter. He's got a high pedigree. And if they fought again, he'd probably beat Canelo's ass again. Okay, so the, if people don't know, like, like I've been around boxing a long time and I'd never heard of this guy. How long has he been? He hasn't lost, right? No, he's undefeated. There's nobody that's gonna beat, the, I think that there's nobody that's gonna beat this guy. if. If he's already, he probably trains in a brothel. If he if he can do all that and and because he was, you saw that fight? No, he was. I mean, he, I would go out to training camp out in India. He, he was, was training. Amazing, he was training out in India. I'd go out there once or twice a week to watch him train, cause, you know, just to kind of get a feel of you know what's going on with him and his trainers and stuff. Because I'm the cut man, and I'd worked with him before, so it was a good match. He's a great fighter. Hey, he speak English? Yeah, he actually speaks pretty decent. English. Okay, so if this guy. If this guy wanted to be, I mean, he's, he, he's pretty much all business, too. He's not like a, a, a guy that likes to look at, for attention outside the ring. No, those Russian fighters over there, because of where they come from, they're, they're, they're all business. But they might not be that big in the United States, but around the world, that guy, if he walks down the street, he's probably... I mean, he's a national he's hero a, in yeah. Russia. In it's Russia. like Russell Peters. Like, Russell Peters could, could light himself on fire in front of the comedy store. Nobody would know him. But if you... But if you see him uh, in India or in Australia or yeah. Saudi Arabia or in London, I mean, everybody knows who he is. Russell's actually a friend and met him through uh, MMA fighter Kung Lee. I know, yeah. I know Russell. Could you describe him? Or, or, yeah. Cause you're, I've actually been to his house and he had, might have had his, I don't know, a girlfriend. You or didn't get that, that shirt from him, though, because he wore shirts. That, well, I got the, shirts that are kind of no, tight that don't fit. No, I got this from Gil. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, this was Gil's shirt in 1981. In 1981? I thought you were for the ladies. All right, so... so, so um, but this dude, this dude is like the real deal, huh? The real deal. And and is he comfortable at that weight? Yeah, he's a natural. He's not going to go down and weight. You no, know, actually, he says he could go down one weight class to the super middleweight, where Canelo's probably the at his best. And, you know, and money talks, money talks. Because he he fucking. Because Gil told me today I was going to get something from Manscaped today, and I was going to get some water. <laughs> oh yeah, you probably get some. I don't know how your webbles are, but yeah. believe me, when you get home, they'll be they'll be begging you for this stuff. Yeah. So so. Um, he pretty much had his way with Canelo in that fight, huh? I, I think he did. Yeah, I, think I mean, so. he didn't like take him to the movies and like take him out to Red Lobster three but, times. But he he went down his top like on the first day. He he knew what was gonna. He knew that that Canelo couldn't beat him. It was crazy. About the sixth round, we're in the corner and we're talking to him, and he looked up at us, and he says, "I got this, no problem." 
Yeah, so you know, right? Yeah. And, and, and boxing is a is a is a sport where, I mean, you know, in baseball they go, okay, you know, it's not over till it's over. But in boxing, you could you see a dude that gets knocked down twice, three knockdown rule. The dude gets up and he just starts to whatever instinct that is in a fighter, and he just starts throwing and he hits the dude and knocks the dude. I mean, it's really one of those things where you you look like you could be navigating pretty well, and then you're in the dressing room and they're cutting your gloves off. You what the fuck? I had a fighter that did that. We took him back to the locker room and. He says, when do I fight? And I say, hey, player, it's over. It's what, over. What, what, what punch does that? Like a, to the chin or the side of the head? You know, it really just depends. It's usually the, George, it's usually the punch you don't see. Mm-hmm. You know, the punch you don't see is the one that hurts you. I don't, you know, you get, you get hit, and if you can brace yourself for it, maybe you can, you can lessen the blow. But the ones you don't see, you know, you remember, you, you see a lot of great knockouts when Tommy Hearns knocked out Roberto Duran. You know, in the 80s. That was a bad knockout. And Duran, you know, my favorite fighter. I have had a chance to meet him. But Tommy Hearns was no joke in the 80s. And, he, and Duran was just too small for Tommy Hearns. Small. Yeah, real, real small. So, um, And that punch, like, Hearns was right here. And that punch came from, like... <laughs> like, from left field. It came from, like, where the Luxor is now. Like, yes. way down. Yeah. And he, and he and it hit him <laughs> right there, And man. you remember Duran, and, and, and Duran fell, actually fell face first. I was working during the day, and I made a bet for $100 that, of course, a Latino, you better... I'll bet up, if Roberto Duran fought today, right. I would still put money on him. Right. Even though he, he's not going to win. And everybody's like, Tom Hearns going to kick his ass. I said, hundred dollars. This was I, I was working during the day. Fucking Duran hadn't hit the mat yet. Bring the fucking phone right. <laughs> that big old loud ring on the old phone. That ah. big phone. I, and my grandma. I don't know how we got it. We had a we had a ringer outside. Sound like an that auto was shop. An industrial. Yeah, yeah sound like had, an auto shop. Yeah, my grandparents had that because they were deaf. Yay! Yeah. And they would be like. Fucking three houses. I see your fucking phone. Yeah. Like, like loud fucking ring. Yeah, my grandparents had one. Loud. Like, not, and it's just like a square a... thing like this. Yeah, it sounds outside. like I was in a metal shop. Yeah. So the long cord. The, yeah, the long cord. Yeah. Um. So so, what's are they gonna fight again? I think eventually they weight. will. But Canelo's gonna fight Triple G in that third fight, which is a good fight for boxing. I thought I thought Triple G won the first fight. I thought he did win the first fight. I have no problems with it being a draw the second fight. Um, I think before Canelo lost to Bivol, everybody was counting Triple G out. Triple G just beat a guy in Japan a couple months ago that was a really good fighter, knocked him out. So I think this third fight's gonna be good for both of them, you know, to kind of finish unfinished business. And I think it's gonna be good for boxing. Bivol's probably gonna he's gonna have a couple of fights and I'd love to see him and Canelo again. You know, would you would you consider like they always say that it's like a car, you know, when a car gets in a bad accident and they total them usually. But if they don't, that car is never the same. Right. And they say that about boxers. If a boxer takes a tremendous ass kicking, where where they throw the towel in or or if he still has his hands up but he's being punched and, and they come in and break it up. And he loses. And for that. anybody that's been divorced, you know what that feels like, right? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because w- one day you got money, and the next day they're cutting your gloves off, and you're going, "I can't wait to go have some steak." <laughs> you can't afford it. Oh. So, so hometown b- b- But uh, a dude's never the same, huh? A guy that gets his ass. You know what? I always never tell people this, and it's honest. It's it's true. It's almost better to get knocked out with one punch than to stay, than, than to sustain an ass whooping right. for 10, 11 rounds that, that really does damage to your body long term. It's like an NFL cornerback. They get burned on a play, they got to come back, and they, they got to have a short memory. Right. And when, when you saw when Pacquiao got knocked out by Marquez, he had a short memory because it was just really one punch. The right. rest of their fights had all been competitive. It's when you start having long-term beatings, those are the ones that put a lot of miles on the O'Donnell. Okay, now also, you know, Manny Pacquiao was called like the Mexicutioner. You know, he kicked Mexican fighters' ass. Yeah. So in their fights, I think that was the fourth one or third? Fourth. fourth. One? So, so... Uh, from Oscar and all that, you know, that Marquez knew that in the last part of a round, he's going to have his hands down. Like, that was intel, right? Like, in knowing and watching Pacquiao. Well, they had fought so many damn times. That they knew. And he didn't know what round, but he knew that in the last, when they do that shit, that there was going to be an opportunity to take that shot. And Marquez is a very smart fighter. And he, and he took it and fucking laid his ass yeah, out. Yeah, and you know what's crazy is... I got to work with Manny the last part of his career. And he's just he's the best to work with when he actually won the title. He won the title again after that. A lot of people don't remember reason, that. Yeah. When he beat Keith Thurman in right. Vegas. I was actually his cut man for I was, was Manny's cut man for the last two fights. Yeah. I mean only eight division world champion ever. It was it was an honor. Because he's yeah. not just a guy like Oh, he was a champion. I mean, this, you're, he's an iconic. Figure. He was a yeah. He he uh, he was a one of very few people that could 
you know, like with somebody say when an actor can open a movie, he, he can hold. Yeah, he can hold Vegas for that weekend. Those are hundred percent. Those are great weekends. Oscar was football. like that. Canelo was like that. Mayweather. You know, there's very few people that could do that. Uh, um, Jim Gray, the reporter. I played, see Jim a lot at the fights. I played golf. I played golf with him. He said that. I said, who who wouldn't you want to get hit by? We were playing golf, and I said like Ernie Shavers or you know one of those guys. And he goes, I think Canelo's like one of the hardest hitting dudes. He uh, does, he especially for his size, because he's not a heavyweight. Right. But there's an old saying, Muhammad Ali, it's a, I love the old 70s, 80s boxing. Muhammad Ali said that if Ernie Shavers could take a punch, he would have been heavyweight champion of the world forever. He goes, that's how hard Ernie Shavers hit. Yeah, hard. Wow. Remember when he hit Larry Holmes, it almost looked like a gunshot hit him. Yeah. I don't know how Holmes got up, right. but he did. But he did. Remember when all those snipes knocked down Larry Holmes? Larry yeah. Holmes looked like he's getting ready for work. That boy got up. He was like trying to put <laughs> buckle shit. He was all fucking. His leg was behind, and he got up. Bro. Do you he, remember he knew all of his fucking? He was champ. He knew his whole life was gonna change yeah. if he didn't get up. Oh well, yeah. And he fucking knew, and his face was all. Do you remember what happened to Snipes after the fight when they were cutting the gloves off for the interview? His trainer accidentally uh, oh. cut his artery. Oh fuck! Instead of the glove, he oh, cut man. into the artery. It was right there on ABC with Howard Cosell and everything. Wow. Yeah, he, wow. Got, he they had to yeah. take him to the hospital. Yes. Yeah, but I remember yeah. when all those snipes, yeah. So, so okay, so we'll look forward to, you think you think that, uh, was Canelo stalling out Triple G to get to let him get old? I mean, fuck. I mean, it's a, there's a business side to it. I think that's why Mayweather and Pacquiao didn't fight. I think Mayweather was waiting out Pacquiao for a while. You know, these guys are smart businessmen. Mm -hmm. all your, when you look at the last 20 years, when you look at these fighters, they're great fighters. But they're smart businessmen. Oscar. Oscar never ducked anybody. People talk a lot of shit about Oscar, about his lifestyle and stuff. Let me tell you something. He fought. What everybody. do you mean his lifestyle? Well, you know, just because he's been in the tabloids a little bit and, you know, yes. you know what I mean. Maybe once or twice. Um, but, but, I mean, he was, a, he was a great fighter. He never ducked anybody. No. What, ha what happened when he fought Trinidad? Did his corner tell him to stop punching that he had it won? You know what? That, that, that's, a, that's the one that you don't, really don't get the answer Straight. Yeah, you never, you know, I, I think maybe they thought he had the fight won big on rounds. I think so. And sometimes when you're in that corner, your perception's a little bit different than what maybe the judges are seeing. But would you tell a runner to to not run as hard toward the end? You're like, hey, I, you got him. I just don't, you don't have to run so hard. You'd run to the end, right? I, I wouldn't because every round, you got you, you every to me, you want to win every round, especially at that level. Trinidad's a great fighter. And then what if, what if you go and you're fucking, like they tell you, in the seventh, hey man, you got this dude. You take eight and nine off, no. and in ten, you need those fucking rounds. You gave him up. That yeah. dude comes back and wins three, four rounds in a row. Momentum, like in life, when momentum changes, it's hard to get it back. In, go in golf, you'd see a dude like like that. You see a guy leading by maybe one or two or whatever, five. They say it's hard to play with a lead because the human nature is to play. Like you don't want to lose instead of playing like you're going to yeah, win. Yeah, you never want to play to lose. You start to play where you're holding on or the dude catches the dude from behind by shooting 64 or the other guy shot 70. He goes, hey, I'm not embarrassed. You shoot, well, the guy shot 64, you could have shot 67, you would have beat him. But those guys play conservative from the beginning and then like in boxing or in, where, you have, where you have it in your hands, like golf, you start playing like safe. And then when you need it toward the end, you, you forgot what it was like to fucking sleep. There's, there's an old sports saying, it's paralysis by analysis. That's right. That's it. You start, you start nutting up a little bit. You see it happen. I mean, you see it in basketball games. Teams are leading by 25. That's right. You turn the TV off. You turn it back on half an hour later, and it's tight. You know what? In, uh, in, in golf, if you, see a, if you see a chick on a golf course, you can see fucking Janet Reno hey, with a fucking golf up. Ever Janet Reno? Uh, yeah. And who was, who she, was the ugly ones? She uh, was uh, one of the one on Baywatch? She was, the, the, she was the. Uh, she was the one that went to go get the uh, uh, Elian Gonzalez out of. She was oh, the, I thought she was the one with David Hasselhoff. No, which one was that one? No, no, but you know, like Amoroso, one of those, yeah. one of the la cabrona. But you put oh. you put her in golf clothes, and they look how you could put Eileen Ryan, hey, from Granny from Beverly Hillbillies, into fucking visor. With a little skirt, you'd be like, fucking granny. And she was only like 35 when at she did that show, so, right? So if you see a girl at a boxing match, isn't she hotter than she is outside? Like there's something about a woman at a boxing. Well, you got to remember those dresses. <laughs> they're like little, like a bondigas. They're like little sausages. Yeah. Then when you take the dress off. Fucking carne. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if over, no <laughs> yeah next time right you got the menudo, the, the whole thing. I used to be a regular oh, at the yeah. Olympic Auditorium. There was oh, a group of guys. We used to go to every when, week. When it was a Korean church? or, or? No, no, come on, a Korean <laughs> church. Say you want to go back and see it. This is I when they, the height of the box, we'd go every week, group of guys. And my wife, 
the wives got together and they wanted to go. And I said, hey, you, you, this is not a place for ladies, you know, to go down there. She says, I see a group of ladies here every week. So I said, okay, let's but go. They're not necessarily ladies, yeah, right? Yeah, no, they're not. So I said, okay, we go. But I'm telling you, chivalry's dead. You know, that that's not a place for ladies. You want to go? We go. So if the fights are no good in the ring back they're gonna then, be good in the they're stand. going to be good up in the stands. So here come the chingasos, and here comes the guy flying down. He comes Beer, by, everything. And, and, and so... She says, let's go. I said, no, we're not going. I just pushed him back up. Go ahead and yeah. beat the shit out of him up there. She wanted to go to the restroom. I said, you better get some of your girls to go with you because I ain't going with you. Do you remember what they used to do when they were unhappy with the decision? Yeah, they'd throw, they'd, they'd throw coins. Coins. They would piss in a beer yeah, cup and, the, and yeah. throw the piss in the air. Well, I got a story. I worked with Chavez. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they just don't care. I worked with Chavez Jr. a couple years ago in Tucson. And, 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 and the, and the, yeah, and the fans thought that he quit. Yeah. So it's me. Right. Freddie Roach and Chavez Jr. on the apron. All of a sudden, shit starts flying. Some girl throws a high heel, hits me in the shoulder. Now she's walking around with, you know, she probably had fat ankles anyway. Yeah. Because you could just tell that that Was the shoe hot when you picked it up? No, but that shoe looked like it had that stress test, like, like it was fucking, about to burst anyway. Like a little fucking gourmet. Yeah, it was, like, it was like if Gil had, you know, yeah. he had oh. high heels. It looked yeah. like a, he, a fuck, he was wearing like tacones a, yeah. that night at Steven. Ten, ten pound out. chorizo and a five pound skin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, so uh, we got hit with everything. Yeah. Did he quit? What was the th thing there? No. No, he had he had busted his nose, but the fans didn't know that. He had busted his nose really bad, and he couldn't breathe. And uh, but the fans didn't know that. They just figured he quit. Right. So. But did I, he say? Did he say I can't breathe? I can't well, in breathe. the corner, you could just tell he couldn't yeah, breathe. Every yeah. time he every time he breathed, the only thing that was coming out of his nostrils wow. and his mouth was that it's red blood. It's dangerous, huh? That very red, dangerous. Red, red, that yeah, red blood. yeah, very dangerous. But they, they don't know that. They're drunk. They're just they just want you know people to fight. But we got hit with everything. I got hit with a high heel. We got hit with cups. Where was that, at a casino outside? No, that was at uh, where the Suns play in Tucson. Oh. America West Arena. I don't know what they call it now. Did you go to fights at Caesars when they had that in the parking lot out there? The no, floor? I remember watching them, though. That was back in the, that, that was in the 80s. There were some great fights there. Great fight. I remember when Stevie Cruz beat Barry McGuigan in there that fight. Barry McGuigan was the best fighter, one of the best fighters in the world. He's from Ireland. I, Irish he, Barry co he comes out and fights a kid from Fort Worth, Texas in the 120 the degree heat. heat at Caesars Palace. He wilted. Is Stevie, Stevie Cruz still alive? He is, and I've been trying to find Stevie Cruz. I've been trying to get get him tickets whenever I go to fights in Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm going to be with Virgil Ortiz, um, August 6th in Dallas, Fort Worth. Oh, hey, Stevie weeks. Cruz. Yeah. Tell him, man. Tell him which one's your camera right there. Tell him. Stevie Cruz, man. If uh, reach out to somebody that knows me, you can go on my my Instagram at Boxer Rods. B O X E R R O D Z. I want to give you some tickets to a fight. When you fought at the 81 Nationals up in Concord, California, you came to our gym for all week, uh, and we kind of hosted the Nationals, and I got to know him, and I hadn't seen him since. He went on to win the Nationals, win a world title. Last I heard, he was working, just, you know, lives a very simple life now, but he was a great fighter. Great fighter. Um... Yeah, man, he was he was he was great. That fight they did fight outside, and you know that they did fight a lot of fights outside. And um, Barry McGuigan was is amazing was an amazing fight. He yeah. ran into a dude that that was his night. But do you remember when Barry toward the end of the of the rounds and Barry McGuigan was saying to his corner, "Say a prayer." Say a prayer in Irish, like, like, oh, like, like, Irish, like, like say a prayer for me because it's uh, like. Uh, well, he's from Ireland. I mean, it doesn't they, get. Say, say a prayer. Say a prayer. Stevie Cruz is from Fort Worth, Texas. Man, I, I would have to say in July or August in Fort Worth, Texas, it gets a little hot, it gets a little humid. Vegas really? in the summertime is very hot, and I don't think McGuigan really accounted for that heat. No, I think he thought that he was going to walk through him and went yeah. a lot longer than he thought. I think that's where Duku Kim and uh, Ray Mancini and, and Ray Mancini yeah, fought. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the 80s, I mean, that was a, such an unfortunate incident, but the 80s were just such a great era for boxing. Man. Everybody fought. You never heard of a guy saying, oh, I'm not fighting him. He fought He fought till he died. Literally. And then his mom uh, com committed suicide as well. Like, Did she? Couldn't, do, couldn't deal with the loss. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. But, you know, it depends, man. Like, you know, there's some people that, I don't think there's there any more, but if you... You I mean you guys were in a profession where you, you would take a bullet for each other? Absolutely. So you would sure. you would stay out there till the, you wouldn't say, man, we, it's getting sh this shit. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Mm. And that's where like that guy. And the honor of his sport, like he 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 knew what he was doing. He could have quit. He and you know what? He even wrote. Let's a little. I don't know. I think it's a, a known story. He even wrote on the mirror in his dressing room, "I will I will die if I in Korean, I will die if I have to." And then and he, he meant a, that. He, he meant a great it. Fight. I mean, he shouldn't. It shouldn't have came to that. That's just boxing. I lost a fighter three years ago, Patrick Day. They did a feature on HBO. He fought in Chicago. Um, 
he got knocked out in the ring, never regained consciousness. Man. Those kind of things will uh, will change you forever. Both of his parents were very educated. They worked at the United Nations. He had a college degree, but he was a good boxer. He wasn't like, you know, some guy that was just on the fringes of it. He right. was a highly decorated amateur. He was having a good pro career. Not a great fighter, but a good fighter. And I remember when he got hit, guys, I remember all I wanted to do was see some movement. And I ran around the ring because I've seen guys get knocked out and they rush the paramedics in immediately. And I saw no movement. And I still had two fights to work. Hmm. And I'm on the phone with his, with, with his trainer. And I'm like, is he okay? And he's like, no, he's not okay. The worst possible scenario. And what was the scenario that, that... He got hit, I think when he got hit, his head his head hit the canvas. Oh, I saw that, yeah. But you know, in boxing, it's not like basketball or football where your knee hurts and you can say, you can see the swelling. You can't see what's going on no. in somebody's brain. Internally. And you got boxers, cliff divers, downhill yeah. skiers, auto racers, those guys that roast those little rice rocket, those right. little, those motorcycles. I mean, it's, sometimes it's not a matter of if... It's a matter of when. Right. Those are dangerous jobs. And getting back to what you said about, you know, like, you know, you were in the military, correct? Mm -hmm. you know, I was in yeah. the military and you're a cop. I was yeah, in the military. I, I was in the Kiss Army. With them. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> the comic book with real blood. Yeah, I remember and that. And that in the tooth from me. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to be Paul Stanley or Peter Chris? <laughs> Which one did I want to be? Um, Ace Freely? I can't remember, man. Probably Gene. Or you wanted to be Gene Simmons with yeah. your tongue? But I know Paul Stanley. I know those dudes. Yeah. They're good dudes, yeah. MedTerra was founded by a group of friends passionate about bringing CBD to those who wants. love it most. If you haven't heard of CBD, it can promote relaxation, sleep, and a slew of other benefits. Tropicals like the hemp-infused Manuka Cream and on-the-go pain relief roll-on help you balance your skin and body and mind. Tasty sweets like their full-spectrum deep sleep gummies support your journey in finding sleep. Restorative sleep that leads to rejuvenated day. You know, modern life is so busy that we often put our recovery and rest last because there just isn't enough time. But also, you know, when you find a product like Metera that can help you go to sleep, but also get deep sleep or like the cream, you know, we're big, we're big proponents of the cream that, you know, it, it may take something like the 30% off to lead you to buy these products. To buy these products, but when you do buy the products, um, they will help you for as long as you use the products. I mean, hopefully, it's you know during your life. You know, so Medterra has designed high quality, accessible, and easy to incorporate wellness solutions like the Manuka Cream and Pain Relief Roll On to support daily wellness. Like you know, when I was uh, doing this last movie that I was involved with, I had some I had some pain, and I used uh, some of the product, and it made me. It made it easier for me to get through my day. Like, I'm I'm worried about the nighttime because you know you're going to rest in the nighttime. But these things help you get through the day when you're in pain during the day, and it doesn't look like you're not going to get home for a while. So, you know, people have daily pain, and you use this stuff, and it, it helps you get uh, better rest. It helps you relieve the pain. Full-spectrum deep sleep gummies are a sweet and simple way to help you fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and wake up feeling refreshed. So here's the thing with the the gummies: like some, most of the people that I know would smoke before they went to bed, right? But I'm more comfortable. Like I'm not against this stuff, and you you and I are not big users. That's of That's right. But if people think I am, but we're but we're not big users. But you had great results with the gummies, right? I sure did. Help yeah. me sleep. And and I would prefer to. Do the um, the CBD THC gummies as proposed to smoking, like you know, when you're in your house or whatever. The thing, it's just it's just a choice. You're, it's, exactly, it's, it's cool to have the choice. Yeah, our industrial hemp is grown in America and is U.S. Hemp Authority certified. Our products are third party tested, non GMO, contains organic ingredients, and grain free. OMG High listeners get 30% off free shipping with their order of Medterra. Go to medterra.com slash OMGHI and enter the code OMGHI at checkout. That's medterra.com slash OMGHI. And please enter the code of OMGHI at checkout for 30% off and free shipping. But let me, let me say this, you know, there's a lot of ads and things that people do other ads. 
But if you're younger or older, if you're younger, you're probably more aware of what's going on with CBD and THC. But, you know, people that are a little bit older, that it's new to them, I think it's something that if they found this, they'd be less reliant on prescription medication and more reliant on this that they can trust. And it's not uh, as hard on your body as prescriptions. That's what I say. Simple. I've tried it. It works. And it and you were not a big person. And I was not one to jump into this stuff right. due to my background. Right. But this helps. Allows me to sleep. As old as I am, I think I deserve to have a good night's you sleep. You know what? I, yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, I uh, was having some trouble, you know, over the weekend. And, and I golfed. And you get home. And, you know, you just uh, been walking or, you know, six hours. And the sleep that I got Saturday with stuff was just really, really refreshing, man. Good. Refreshing. You know, we're talking about baseball. They're trying to make baseball uh, faster. If they, what would they do to make boxing safer? Two, two minute rounds or, or what? Nobody, you know, you they know, were at the pads and everything, and you don't want to wear a fucking helmet. And they're like, if you no. saw a kid with a helmet and a bike, you'd be like, I hold the way with a fucking helmet. No, you know what? It's just one of, like I <laughs> right said, how, how, do right. you make, how do you make cliff diving safer? How do you make downhills? Some things just are just inherently. Dangerous. Dangerous, and that's why people pay good money and they make millions of dollars to do it. And I'm not saying it, it's it's the price of doing business, because it's not, because you're talking about a human life, but everybody that fights knows what the end result. You can literally go into that ring and come out a different person. Mm -hmm. And like we just talked about, guys that take really savage beatings and they're never the same again. And sometimes- Bobby Chacon. One of my favorite fighters of all time. Sure. But yeah, I mean the, uh, right. I mean, the school, when his original nickname was Schoolboy Bobby yep. Chacon. I mean, he was. You guys are from the same area. You correct? know who? You know who were the greats that came out of San Fernando? Gary Matthews. Yeah, baseball player. Uh, Richie Valens. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Chacon. And there's another guy, right? He was Charles a White. Charles White, USC. And the little fucking boy that would hit lemons in the backyard and jack off every fucking to an alarma of the Mexican magazine, George Lopez. <laughs> did, did, did you have one of those like my grandpa used to have those calendars where you could lift the film up oh, fucking behind. and they were naked underneath uh, and the sag is fucking that uh, uh, right? I'll see a fucking dude in the park with fucking that look like old dog ears so yeah like old fuck you know, you know a sock with some money in it um, and now when you get older and you're 60 you're shooting pool with a rope yeah I'm you know <laughs> If it wants it, I I do it. I don't yeah, I don't tell it. It tells me. Right. The uh, so so uh, uh, boxing. Yes. Okay. So Stevie Cruz and I saw a dude and uh, I was with the I was in Corpus Christi and there was a guy that was a fighter. I don't remember. Fuck it. Forget it. Forget it. I was with Selena's dad and he was in the. I don't remember, man. I mean, Texas is such a hotbed for and boxing. He was married and and I'm trying to th Jesse, I, if, Jesse Benavides. He was from Corpus Christi, I, Texas, I, former uh, national amateur Jesse champion. Benavides. I think he was. He, he fought was an for, older dude, man. Um, older than you. What I mean, older than you. I mean, it's not that fucking old. old. No, I'm, I'm older than Gil. <laughs> Let me see if I can find out. Everybody, no fucking Gil's older than everybody. Fucking Walt Disney and Gil graduated the same fucking year as high school. <laughs> Gil was a sophomore. Right, so, oh, so what else? We're talking he, about he, how long did we talk about boxing for? Half hour? He graduated. I got my. And GED. we didn't even get to uh, Oscar when he gave us COVID. Um, he was on the show just before he, just before he tested for COVID. Oh yeah, he so was, I was that in, week. I, so we were. I was in training camp with him. I'm wrapping his hands every day. Eric Gomez from Golden Boy, his brother Joel. Yeah. I'm wrapping his hands. He was going to fight Beto Belfort, you know. And people were like, when when Oscar tested positive for COVID, like, oh, he's faking it. I'm like, no. Fuck you know what? I got COVID too. I'm glad that he didn't fight that dude. Yeah, I think in his heart of hearts, you know, everybody has their time. You know, Vito Belfort's a big, strong guy. I know he, fought, I, he fought Holyfield. He knocked Holyfield out in about 14 seconds. And Holyfield, you know, they're not they're not firefighters, but you know, well, he's a he was a UFC world champion. He knows how to fight. It, 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 would you walk into a fucking wood chipper? You're like, fuck no, eh? No, that dude, that dude knows how to fight. He could. He just fucking steer you like this. Wham! He may not be able to outbox Oscar for 12 rounds in Oscar's prime, but in one of these kind of fights with two-minute rounds, you know, smaller ring, everybody's a little bit older. Yeah, it's... it's. Um, but I just took... Would you rather fight in a liquor store or, or in the park in a liquor store? Depends if it's in Bell Gardens. That's what Compton. I'm saying. I think you want to fight inside the store. There's motherfuckers that are outside. 
They'll find something to hit you with. Yeah, like the Frito Lay's rack. The fucking rack. The, uh, the Herald Examiner. That's yeah. how those out there. Yeah, the Herald Examiner. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we talking about? We talked about boxing. Um, no, we're still talking about boxing. Yeah. So, so, but when they fought out, see, you know, now they fight in there in the T Mobile with a motherfucking mama. At, at, well, look inside. at now. What you call it? Staples Center is the crypto. I mean, to me, that's Kobe's house, man. That's to me, that's always going to be Staples Center, man. It's like change the name of Madison Square Garden. What if they? I don't know if they called it, you know, the name of a. Ba- it's Madison Square Garden. Isn't the Forum the Kia Forum now? Yeah. Is that always going to be the fabulous Forum to all you guys? Yeah. You think of Magic? It was a Johnson? Great Western Forum. Even, yeah, even Great Western. Great Western. Great Western. Great, great Western Forum. Great Western was a bank. Yeah, and they said everybody great, got their they, fucking money taken, but they said the, great the, fights. The there. name, yeah, oh yeah. I went Sunday. I went to Sunday fights in the early '80s, and uh, I saw the, the cast of Taxi was there. You know, because Tony Danza and yeah. all that stuff. And then uh, we were driving down uh, uh, Manchester. Uh, were you famous then, or no? No. And so they didn't want to say hi to you or nothing. No, no, I, I was in the thing. And then I was, I was in the '80s. And then we saw Chick Hearn driving down the. the he was in a Toyota. He used to do Toyota commercials, and we were fucking yelling at him until he finally went. So we were Chick Hearn. I got, we fucking driving. I got pickpocketed at the forum. From the front or the back? Yeah, from from behind. I <laughs> took my ID. <laughs> and, you know. Some guy was trying to buy beer with your pitch. Shit. You, you know, back then you had to fill out a bunch of paperwork. I was a new, I was a rookie. And you had to fill out a bunch of paperwork. I lost my badge. You know, I got picked by. As soon as I God filled on. out the, all the, the shit, did they, were they submitted started, did they it. they laugh at you? Two days later, you they found, found it. it. They fo- I didn't. No, but somebody found it. Somebody found it. 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 I had been pickpocketed. They knew they had. Uh, Pickpockets working there. I would have used I it. I went to see the Harlem Globetrotters. You and think it was one of them? No. Uh, my badge it. ended up in the and fuck the metal mark, my in fucking the ID. woman's head. <laughs> they found it. They didn't want the badge. They just threw it away. Threw oh. it in the trash can. Can I tell you that there's a Mount Rushmore of people <clears throat> that I've met. Metal Ark Lemon was one of the one of the greatest people I've ever met. And you know, you watch him growing up. And oh, I met yeah. him. Oh, and I met yes, him. Yes. Tony LaRusso introduced me to him. He, I missed him, man. Like, he was fucking metal. Was you think of all the people that he entertained over the years all over the world that he brought mm-hmm. happiness to. Like Gil. Sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of them was a Skywalker and Condunk. The other one worked the Night Stalker. Same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about the... What about the, the... What about the serial killers that are still out there? They're still... There's... Well, they, don't, they, don't, they can't know how many active, but there's a lot of hundreds of cases that are multiple murders that are still you know on. in different 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 pockets in different regions. You're always yeah. going to have serial killers working. They did some research, and Gil would probably know more about this in the '70s and early '80s in LA. LA had a lot of serial killers working. They, they you, really did. I just spoke with a guy uh, earlier this year, the one that broke the did the DNA on the uh, Golden State Killer. Yes. Uh, Paul, and I, I apologize again, I forget Paul, what's his last name? Paul Holtz. I was with him uh, back at CrimeCon. I didn't know that fucking dude's name. And uh, so, I, the day before I talked to Paul, I'm talking to some lady up there, and she says, there are no more serial killers. I said, no, you know, you're kidding yourself, you Who's think there's stupid? no more serial killers. Who's that stupid ass lady that said that? Uh, I don't even know her name, and I'm glad I don't. But she said, she, there are no more she says, do you really? Be? I said, certainly there are. They just haven't been detected. Well, I think when people think of serial killers, they're thinking of people that kill 70 or 80 people. I just recently concluded a case that I worked with LAPD of a serial killer. We just He just he gets sentenced in a couple of weeks. He was actually out of San Fernando. I don't even know if you remember the guy oh. that was killing people with a shotgun, shot some dogs about seven or eight years ago. He uh. went on like a two- or three-day killing spree. I mean, you don't you don't really need to be Ted Bundy to be a serial killer. Sure, There's sure. There's a lot of, different, lot of different factors that come into that. Three or more, and then it's... And the next day in the New York Post, Paul gave a statement. He's, he believes there's a, up to as many as 2,000 serial killers in the United States still working today. You know, we come up with, you know, n- new technology. We come up with new ways to work them. Well, the guys on the other side are studying ways yeah. to beat the new technology and beat the way we're working. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, so they just have to understand that. The, uh, how did they catch the uh, that guy, the... Was it Golden State Killer? Through familiar DNA. I mean, that was many, many years later, right? Yeah. yeah the guy By the time along. they ended up catching up with the guy, right, he was already in his seventh. Yeah. yeah. Shit, he's an old man. Yeah. You know? Matter of fact, first time we made a court appearance, he's in a wheelchair. You know, and then my wife said, look at that just for show. Look at him. 
because he was at a at a he had stopped killing for many many years. The, um, <clears throat> we don't have the uh, you know those dudes that are sitting on death row. Um, th- we used to put people to death, right? Yeah, we and, did. And it wasn't that frequent, but. You know, now there's a moratorium on that stuff. So no, you got guys on death is row. Is it based on the governor? Or is it based on just California law? Different, different states have. Is it federal? Oh, absolutely. If you if you go on death row in like Florida, Georgia, or Texas, they'll fucking your exactly. appeals they're, process they're, is over in about four and a half weeks. They're yeah. gone. When they talk about they're the gone. last meal, they're really giving you your last meal. I mean, California. It it, it even if they when they were doing it, it's you're talking. You think anybody ever asked for panocha as a last meal? <laughs> <laughs> would, they, would, would they do it? To the bars? Would they do it? And say, hey, hey, sir, would you like some lobster or prime rib? Or no, no. Give me just give me a, a fucking <laughs> old school one. <laughs> an, old, an old school one. He didn't go to the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> like one that looks like the like a pastrami sandwich from the hat. Get a, oh, those are good. Yeah. If, you, if she comes with, with a yellow wrap paper, I just yeah. Get, yeah. All That's right. when you know you're getting the so, hat. So who 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 um who would to, who would be the one to say the governor? He's the one to put a moratorium. Yeah, on. I think the governor is the one to be able to do that. Are you guys in favor of the death penalty? I don't think this particular governor does. This He's governor, not. he he said he came right out right after he got elected. He said, "I know the people, the state of California, voted to enact reenact the death penalty." He said, "But it goes against my conscience, mm. and I can't do it." So, so long as I'm governor, nobody will die as a result of. But death don't you penalty. have to do the will of the people, or the governor can well, supersede? He, he can he, save you from being killed, but can yeah, he, exactly. I guess he can say who who can and can't. He can just well, I think in the end, the governor is the one that has to sign off on it at the end. Yes. When all, when all your appeals are exhausted, and if they're not going to sign off on it, so are we still executing people in, the, in this country every day or once in a while? You don't I really. Think hear. I think in some this states, country we are. Yeah, yeah. I think in yeah. some states. I think in Kansas and Texas and Georgia, Florida, Florida. Florida. I mean, they give the death penalty there. in Florida. You really, you really got the death penalty. It right. ain't like California where you could. Oh, I'm going to still live 25 years. Right. I think yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. It's hard to say because, you know, what, when what, Steve Cooley was the. Uh, when he was a DA, he tried to help out get legislation to cut that appeals process down, you know, limit it to right. the amount of years it would take to get it done. 27 states still have it. 27 states still have it? Oh. Yeah, as of 2021. Now, whether all 27 are actually active in the process. I don't think so. No. But there's some heinous motherfuckers on death row. No, oh, let them go. Let them go. Let God sort them out. There you go. How about they do like they do to cats? They put them in a bag and throw them in the fucking river out there to solve the death. Right? Say, Quentin, take them swimming with little fucking things around their ankle. Like, well, go. Actual real cats? But yeah, oh, wow. with cats. But I mean, it's just there's no deterrent to there's no deterrent to crime. I mean, well, it's like when you go to other countries, like Iran, you get caught stealing, they cut your hand off. So they know they already know if you're a repeat yeah, offender, right? Stealing, right? <laughs> hey, I, hey, I've never done this before. No, yeah. you, they, fucking what, eyes gone. What happened like, to your head? You know, you, oh, I had an industrial accident. No, what were you doing with the eye? I look at that lady get dressed. The fuck, I'm about to took your fucking eye out. Hey. I'm keeping an eye out for her. You know? Uh, um, how did, hey, what, 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 what um, branch of the military were you in? Air Force. So Gil's, you were Army, right, Gil? I was Army. Gil told me that was, was for dudes that can't become uh, mailmen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I saw Gil's face because I've known him a long time. He was well, trying to be nice. Trying to be a fucking man. I just go to the fucking Air Force. Fuck you guys. And since George was part of the Kiss Army, <laughs> that, right? That, that, that's not that, that's not so. You. What, what was uh, was your father? What what, what military experience? Yeah, my was dad was a Viet- Vietnam veteran in the Navy. Wow. God bless him. And they him. used to. Uh, God bless him. Those. Uh, He's still alive. Yeah, my dad is God, seventy-five. God my parents are big fans of yours. I don't. Here's two. Ru- Ru- Rudy here's and Mary here. Rodriguez. All right, Rudy and Mary. All right, um, that's awesome. Thank you for your service, Rudy. And the planes that used to fly low in the jungle. Uh-huh. Um, he was in uh, Vietnam there, damn. and my grandfather was in the Pacific in World War II. Oh, wow. Funny Beautiful. story, my grandpa's name is Joe Rodriguez, fruit picker. My grandpa worked all the fields. I come from very, very humble beginnings, fruit pickers. My grandpa gets drafted because they didn't give him a choice. What does humble beginnings mean, poor? I mean, like, poor. But, hey, people say, a couple of humble beginnings, you're fucking poor, motherfucker. No, my grandpa used to pick strawberries. Yep. And Just like when I first told my dad I wanted a box. So what do you want to box? Nectarine, peaches, plums? What do you want to <laughs> Yeah. So my grandfather's the only, there's only two Mexican guys in the whole radar unit in his unit in the Pacific. And they would go out to those islands where all the Japanese were and they'd have to set up communications. It was dangerous. His name is Joe Rodriguez. The only other Mexican in the whole battalion, the only other Mexican is named Joe Rodriguez. 
also. And wow. they're both from Fresno and they didn't know each other. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy that's, story. That's amazing. Yeah. So my, uh, my, my daughter was in the military. My brother's uh, son, Jacob, my nephew, was in Afghanistan. So we have four gen proud four generations of military in my family. So uh, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you, brother. God bless. And, and of course, I, I was in the in the Air Force. I don't know if that counts. And George was in the Kiss Army, right? That's right. Yeah, with a comic book with real blood. Eh? <laughs> you know, I, I had uh, as a result, and I've got photo. I'll, I'll show them to you later. The, Do you the, ever have nightmares of when you were in Vietnam? Eh, I used to have more. I still have them occasionally. And you get them if you go to Panda Express. You, you have little <laughs> Chinese food. You wake up. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Huh? With I'm just, soy sauce I, ah! You know, I'm I'm just learning now because I talked to my mom a <laughs> yeah, little bit about racist. it. Yeah, my my, <laughs> my dad. I didn't know this, and I think my parents had me young. They had me 18, 19 years old. So when I was 10, 11, my parents were only 27, 28 years old. I didn't know this.